Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we're going to be returning to an extremely talented female vocalist who's commonly known as the Korean Mariah Carey. This will be so young. You've already seen her on the channel maybe before performing Arirang Alone and Lean On Me. But I've been waiting very impatiently to do Bridge Over Troubled Water. I really like Simon and Garfunkel. And Bridge Over Troubled Water was originally written by Paul Simon, I believe it was in 1969, released in 1970. And he wrote this song to be about comforting people. So Young has explicitly said in interviews many times that one of her biggest goals with singing is to comfort people. So I think that the uh, congruity in the message is so clear I imagine it's going to be a wonderful fit. I am so excited to hear it. Let's get to it. to tell you I got goosebumps with her first entrance it just I felt so sincere and so beautiful I know that she has this powerhouse voice that she can wield but this beautiful tenderness at the very beginning is it it feels so sincere I love it it touched me it touched me. And it also reminds me of Simon and Garfunkel. Really, like, Paul Simon's voice has a sweetness to it, just a sincere simplicity of it. And anyhow, uh, that was a beautiful entrance. I want to hear it again. <laughs> Let's go here. When you're Ah, uh, uh, eyes water, goosebumps once again. Wow, wow, twice in about a minute. Wow, oh man, and my heart thumped too. Wow, that jump was just gorgeous. She's got like some of the best control of her CT and TA, so cricothyroid and thyroid muscles. She just knows how to like perfectly mix those two together to get just like a chest voice sound that is either a little bit darker or a little bit, you know, little brighter and thinner so that it perfectly can flip up into this gorgeous stretch into a top head voice note. Oh my gosh, I can't. I can't, I can't talk enough about how good that was. Uh, we're gonna go back.
the control and that decrescendo without any vibrato vibrato entering is amazing. But there, there is so much intricacy and her choices of when to be in chest voice versus head voice here. She goes back and forth between the two a ton. The switch is very, very minimal. She's blending the sounds together so that she has, uh, she's basically taking that higher chest voice and she'll make it uh, more vulnerable uh, and have a little bit lighter sound in it so that when she does go to her head voice, which she often will give a little more point to, essentially a little more point of focus in that head voice, it, she can just shift the two and get this very subtle shift in the timbre without it being like, oh, she's in one register or the other. It's just amazing control over her registration while she's doing these beautiful riffs. It's insane, just insane. So we're gonna go back one more time and listen to that. I think maybe around here, see if you can pick out when she's in chest and head voice. It is, uh, it is mastery, total mastery. Just notice how much depth she has in her timbre now and compare it to that light, beautiful, like silver filigree timbre that she had at the beginning. And it's so amazing to hear that she sounds like the same person all the time. It's not over manipulation. It's just understanding the different kinds of colors she has available in her own voice. And there are times when she's going up high here and you see it like almost a cheekbone snarl. So you get this extra edge on the sound that feels like she's smiling inside and it's encouraging. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> She has so much fun with runs. Oh man. Um, some people say that the runs are over ornamented. I've seen that comment before. I, I don't think they are. I think um, I, I like it when runs have a lot of emotional impetus behind them. Um, it feels like when she has uh, like more feelings that are overflowing, you have more runs than essentially it's like the all the little notes are just like little uh, aspects of that emotion that are trickling out. Essentially, I love uh, love the way she does them, and uh, her high belts are just to die for. She is she is able to belt so much higher with so much more depth of timbre, but also with a laser point on the sound, both of these two things um, than most vocalists that exist today. It's just, it is insane. Um, her, her ability to take this belt 
crazy high. I'm going to check the note here. We're going to go back and look at what this note was um, because it is just much higher than you can expect um, from, from anyone out there. Uh, it will be matched by some people, but it is really, really, really clean and very well done here. And it reminds me some of Whitney Houston. Uh, definitely, you know, have that Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston influence in there where you had just these powerhouse vocalists um, who really, I think, formed what we think of as a great female singer today. Uh, it's amazing that you have this singer so young who I feel like is not very well known currently in the U.S. who can totally stand toe to toe with Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. It's brilliant. Let's go back and check how high that belt was in here. This is amazing. Okay, what is that? So that's already an F5 up there. Already. I think she might go higher. So she's staying, going up to an F5 at this moment. The song is not done though, right? We're about two thirds of the way through here. And F5 is uh, one of the big notes. I think that that's the note that Alphaba belts a bunch in Wicked, or maybe it's higher, but it's like, that's already a legendary belty note. And she just keeps going up to it. And it doesn't seem like it is that difficult. Oh, crazy. Uh, loved the flip that she did. It's very Mariah Carey-esque the way she flipped into like a lighter, particularly lighter and fluffy or like airy kind of head voice at one point and then did the run down. That was super cool. Um, and then I also love the way she's using the diphthong on lay. So she's saying lay, yay, yay me down sometimes, which is a really fun way um, to play with the focus and the sound. The E vowel tends to have a lot more buzz here like more forward and A is just a little bit back, uh, but they're very similar vowels. And it can be really fun to also play with runs going through that dip song, which she's done some of as well. Like it's nobody's business. It's just like as if it were easy for her, but so heartfelt. I love the communication of heart in here. Like even on troubled at one point, she pulled back and did something that had a little more airiness in it. Uh, she's just, she's like really coloring a lot of the things that she's going by, making this message very, very personal. Let's go back um, one more time. Wow. It, this is, this is so much ear candy. It's, it's incredible. I love Troubled, the detail she gave it there. And then when she went into Over, she actually, um, to me, it sounds like she added more TA or thyroid retinoid engagement to give it a little uh, heftier sound for a moment, which made it sound like it was more longing on over. So it, it's this uh, bridge over troubled water, right? That she wants to help. She sounds like, like the longing to help is super strong, that longing to comfort. And that's just so wonderful, right? We need people like her in the world. 
Okay, uh, let's go back and listen to that one more time. It's over, like a breeze, Eyes watering again. What a great last note there. Um, we're gonna go back. I love the way she spoke. I will lay me. That was so cool. I, she's, I love the way that she used the spoken word there to feel even more friendly and like, like, hey, I'm your friend. Like, I'm, I want to be there for you. Ah. So at one point in there, I also tracked um, a G that she went up to. And, well, guys, my words are failing. It's that good. <laughs> So this last note that she is just belting for forever with like the greatest support, beautiful vocal fold um, connection, that wacka 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 of those vocal folds is like perfect. You want to know about perfect high belting technique? This is it. This is it. 100%. The, the mouth, the jaw dropped open, the entire body supporting it. And man, that laryngeal position, it sounds like it's going to be a ton of breath pressure that's built up because it is a high belt, but it sounds like the position is just, just right. Like there's probably a really lovely tilt in there and it's not, the larynx hasn't shifted up. So it isn't like, crawling into the top of her throat, right? It's in a low neutral position. This is perfect belting. So we're going to listen to it again. <sighs> Wow, uh, I every single person in the world that belts needs to listen to So Young to understand what great, great belting sounds like. That's incredible. It's mind blowing, and the fact that she looks so happy and confident, and she's just spreading joy the entire time makes it even better. I don't think that any of that was vocally stressful to So Young, any of it. It was just flawlessly executed, perfect tuning. I loved the delicate moments that she added and her range of colors that she has available is extraordinary as well. She just, she has it all. Even her English enunciation is great. It's great. It's just great through and through and through. This was worth waiting for. And I'm going to go listen to it a bunch more. And you should too. Okay, we will post the link to this video, as always, in the About section of it. So you can go and listen to that to your heart's delight. And please do that. Support these artists. If you want to comment on what you would like to see next on the channel, please write that down below in the comments of this video. We track that. And I do the songs that you request the most. Also, 
You can come and say hello to me on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. Arizona time. That's when we have live premieres of analysis and reaction videos. And there are no ads at that time, so you should totally join us. And you can find me on Patreon as well and at my website, thecharismaticvoice.com. I hope to see you somewhere soon.